وَمَنْ يُشَاقِقِ الرَّسُولَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى And whoever opposes the messenger after guidance has become clear to him. وَيَتَّبِعْ غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And he follows other than the way of the believers. نُوَلِّهِ مَا تَوَلَّى We will give him what he has taken. وَنُصْلِهِ جَهَنَّمَ وَسَاءَتْ مَصِيرًا And we will drive him into hell, and evil it is as a destination. وَمَنْ يُشَاقِقِ الرَّسُولَ any person, whether he claims to be a Muslim or not. Woman, whosoever, whether he is a scholar, he thinks that he is very knowledgeable, or he is an ordinary person. Any person who يشاقق الرسول opposes the messenger. Yushaqiq is from the root letters Sheen Qaf Qaf, Shaq. And Shaq is to split. To split. And Shiqaq or mushaqa is to split away from something and stand up against it. To split away from something and oppose. So for example, there are 20 people who are working together on a project. Five of them say, we can't work with you anymore. So they split away, they break away. And they form their own group. And this group is in opposition to the original group. So this is what? Mushaqa. You were together before, now you split away, and now you are standing up against what you were with before. So it is basically to separate oneself and then go against someone. So, وَمَنْ يُشَاقِقِ الرَّسُولَ Meaning, whoever breaks away from the messenger and opposes the messenger. Which messenger is this? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa that instead of following the messenger, instead of obeying the messenger, what does he do? He opposes, he goes against the way of the messenger, what the Prophet ﷺ has brought. And when does he oppose the messenger? When does he break away from him? مِن بَعْدِ after مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى After guidance has become clear to him. After Guidance has become clear to him. Meaning he's not doing this out of ignorance. That he doesn't know what the Prophet ﷺ said, what he commanded, and because of his ignorance, he is opposing the messenger. Or he is going against the command of the messenger. No. It's not because of ignorance. It's based on knowledge. Meaning after guidance has become clear to him. Tabayyan, as you know, tabayyun is when something becomes evident, when something becomes manifest to a person. So after al-huda, after guidance has become clear to him. What does it mean by huda over here? Huda refers to the ilm, the knowledge that the Prophet ﷺ brought. The knowledge that the Prophet ﷺ brought. Because that is hidayah. Remember the two types of hidayah? Hidayah irshad. Where do we learn Hidayah Irshad from? Hidayah Irshad, where do we learn it from? From the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet brought the Qur'an. He taught us the Sunnah. He taught us Hikmah. Al-Kitab wal-Hikmah. So Al-Huda over here refers to the knowledge, the ilm that the Prophet ﷺ brought. And we learn of a hadith which is reported in Bukhari and Muslim. That Abu Musa, عنه, he said that the Prophet وسلم, said, مَثَلُ مَا بَعَثَنِيَ اللَّهُ بِهِ مِنَ الْهُدَى وَالْعِلْمِ The example of the guidance and knowledge that Allah has sent me with is like that of rain which falls on a land. The hadith is quite long, which I'm sure you've studied before. But basically, the point of mentioning the hadith is that the Prophet وسلم, said that the example of the huda of the guidance that Allah sent me with. So, what does it refer to? The knowledge that the Prophet ﷺ brought, which includes the Qur'an, the ilm al-nafir, the hikmah, the sunnah. So, after the huda became clear to him. What does it mean by this, that huda became clear to him? Meaning, the truthfulness of the Qur'an, the truthfulness of sunnah, the truthfulness of the deen is clear to him. How? Because of ilm. Because of ilm. Like for example, when a person reads the whole Qur'an, there are some people who say, okay, in the Qur'an Allah says, أَقِيمُ salata Establish the salah. And you open up the dictionary, salat means prayer. 
Salat means prayer. So what are we going to do? We're just going to pray to God wherever, whenever we want. Now, if a person is saying that this is what Salat means, prayer, is he ignoring the ayah about Salatul Khawf that we just read yesterday? Salatul Khawf clearly mentions that Salat is not just dua. The whole method of Salat is mentioned. Is he forgetting about the ayat which mention the sajda, the ruku', the times of salah, which are mentioned so many places in the Qur'an? So what does it show? That if a person is saying that salat means dua and he's taking the evidence from the Qur'an, either he hasn't read the whole Qur'an, or he has read the whole Qur'an and he's deliberately leaving out the ayat that go against him. And he's only picking and choosing. So over here, what is being mentioned? Not the case of the ignorant one, but the case of the knowledgeable one. Meaning the person who, with knowledge, بِمْبَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى The guidance is clear to him. He knows it. How does it become clear to him? Through ilm. Meaning he has ilm of the huda that the Prophet ﷺ brought. But still, deliberately, he opposes. What else does he do? وَيَتَّبِعْ And he follows. What does he follow? غَيْرَ Other than سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ The way of the believers. What is the way of the believers? What is the way of the believers? The way of following the Qur'an and Sunnah, the way that the Prophet ﷺ taught. That is the way of the believers. Like for example, it is said that al-mu'mineen refers to the Sahaba in particular. They were masters of their language. But did any of them interpret as salat as just dua? No. How did they understand as salat? Praying the salat in the proper method that the Prophet ﷺ taught. So the way of the believers is the way that they practice the deen. The way of the believers is the way that the Sahaba practiced the deen. The way they understood and interpreted the religion. That is the way of the believers. So such a person, what does he do? First of all, he opposes the messenger, he breaks away from him. And secondly, his way contradicts the way of the believers. His way contradicts the way of the believers. This shows to us that the way of the believers is actually what? The Prophet ﷺ taught. So such a person, نُوَلِّهِ We will turn him to what? مَا تَوَلَّى to that which he turned. What does it mean by this? Nuwallihi ma tawalla has been understood in two ways. As you know that walla, what does it mean? Tawalla, to turn away. So nuwalli, meaning we will turn him to that which he turned to, meaning we will keep him in the path that he has chosen. We will keep him in the path that he has chosen. Whatever that he has chosen for himself, we will let him do it. We're not going to force him. We're not going to force him to follow the way of the Prophet. We're not going to force him to follow the way of the companions. No. Whatever he has chosen, we will let him go on in it. We will let him adhere to it. Whatever that he has selected, we will let him stay on it. So what does it show? That the more he opposes, the more misled he will be. As we learn in the Quran that فَلَمَّا زَاغُوا أَزَاغَ اللَّهُ قُلُوبَهُمْ When they deviated, Allah deviated their hearts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not force hidayah on anyone. So whatever that he has selected for himself, Allah will allow him to do it. It doesn't mean that Allah likes it, but He will allow him to do it. Secondly, it is said that نُوَلِّهِ مَا تَوَلَّى What this means is that it's from wilaya. And what does wilaya mean? Friendship. And uh, it also gives a sense of leadership. So نُوَلِّهِ مَا تَوَلَّى Meaning we will make him a leader of the misguidance that he has invented. We will make him the leader of the misguidance that he has invented. And what does it mean? That all those people who will follow him in that, he will get the burden of their misguidance. Because he is the leader. He is the innovator. So if a person says, that oh, in the Qur'an, salat means dua. So just pray to God. You don't need to, need to pray these five prayers every day. Who said? Sunnah? Who cares about that? So if a person says that, and other people begin to follow him, he has become the leader of this innovation. Nuwalli ma tawalla. 
And at the end, what's going to happen? وَنُسْلِهِ جَهَنَّمْ And we shall admit him into the hellfire. نُسْلِهِ From صَاد لَمْ يَا What does it mean? To roast something in fire. To admit something. To expose something to fire. So we will let him do whatever he wants to in this world. But eventually, where is he ending up? In جَهَنَّمْ وَسَاءَتْ مَصِيرَ And what an evil destination it is. What do we learn from this ayah? First of all, we learn that everything that the Prophet ﷺ taught was huda, guidance. Everything that the Prophet ﷺ brought was, is guidance for us. So we cannot say, oh, it was only relevant at that time. Now I cannot do it. No, that is guidance. We also learn from this ayah that if a person makes an incorrect judgment or goes against the Sharia because of lack of knowledge, because of lack of knowledge, then he is not blameworthy as the one who does so with knowledge. Because if a person clearly opposes a messenger and invents something in the religion, sometimes it could be shirk. Like for example, there are people, I'm sure all of you have heard, all of you, maybe they're your relatives, who literally go to the graves and worship the people who are dead in the graves. Now, isn't that shirk? Clearly it is shirk. But do you call them mushrik? Do you say that they're kafir? They're doing shirk. But do you call them mushrik? No, you don't. You don't call them kafir. Why? Because they don't have the bayyun of huda. They don't have the knowledge of the guidance. They don't have knowledge of the guidance. But if a person, after gaining knowledge... Still he persists on the wrong way saying that no, this is the way of our forefathers, this is how we've always done it and he continues in that, then definitely he is blameworthy. But if a person, all that he knows is that this is religion and this is what we do, he's never seen anybody else doing something different, never has anybody told him that what you're doing is incorrect, then in that case we don't call such a person a mushrik, we don't call such a person a kafir. Because the condition is mimbardi ma tabayyana. After that the guidance became clear to him. So next time that you hear of someone doing something like that, don't say, oh my God, they're mushrik. We can't eat their food. Because some people go to this extreme. When you go back home and you see maybe your relatives doing something like that, don't pass fatawa on them. What's your duty? What's your obligation? To tell them. Thirdly, we also learn from this ayah about the obligation of obeying the messenger. Because how does the ayah begin? وَمَنْ يُشَاقِقِ الرَّسُولَ Doesn't obey the messenger, but what does he do? He splits away and he opposes the messenger. So this shows to us that obeying the messenger is an obligation. Many people say that Qur'an alone is enough and there is no need to refer to the sunnah, to consult the sunnah for anything. And they will come up with the most lame excuses. But the fact is that if you read this ayah, وَمَنْ يُشَاقِقِ الرَّسُولَ What does it show? The importance, the necessity of obeying the messenger. Fourthly, we also learn from this ayah that when a person leaves the way of the Prophet and he leaves the way of the believers, then he is not on the way of Islam. When a person leaves the way of the Prophet, When a person leaves the way of the believers, then he is not on Islam anymore. Meaning, what he has invented is not deen. It's not the religion of Islam. The religion of Islam is how the Prophet taught and how the Sahaba practiced. So anything that we do in our deen, where do we take the evidence from? The Qur'an, the Sunnah, as well as how the Sahaba interpreted the deen, how they practiced the deen. So for example, some people who proved the validity of messengers after Muhammad wasallam, And sometimes they present ayat from the Qur'an. And they say, leave the sunnah. But we see that the Prophet wasallam clearly mentioned to us that there is no messenger coming after him. The Sahaba fought those people who claimed that they were messengers. Similarly today, if there is a person and who says that homosexuality is halal in Islam, it is permissible in Islam, what is he doing? He is going against, not just the Qur'an, but he is going against the teachings of the Prophet ﷺ and the way that the Sahaba practiced the deen. So if a person invents something in their religion that is not the Qur'an, not the Sunnah, not the way of the Prophet, what is it? 
What is it? It's not deen. It's his own whims. It's his own desires. It's his own innovation. It's not deen. Anything that you call deen has to have evidence from Quran, Sunnah, and the way of the Sahaba. We also learn from this ayah about the obligation of following the way of the believers. The obligation of following the way of the believers, the way of the Sahaba, the way of the Salaf, of the righteous predecessors. But we have to see how they interpreted the Quran and Sunnah. And every single thing that we do in our deen, we have to see how did they interpret, what did they do. Like for example, a simple thing such as hijab. Now people say today, oh hijab, uh, it's just modesty. And you're just supposed to wear modest clothes. Okay. But did the Sahabiyah practice hijab in that way? No. We learned that when the ayat of Surah An-Nur were revealed, what did they do? What did they do? They stayed up at night, stitching their, you can say their abayas and their hijab. And the next morning when they came, they came in proper hijab. They didn't say, oh, alhamdulillah, hijab is in my heart and I'm being very modest. It's in my eyes. Na'udhu billah. That we seek refuge from hijab on our eyes and our heart. Because if there is hijab on our eyes and our heart, then how can we see the truth? So if somebody says that, then what is he doing? He is not following the way of the Sahaba. So we learn about the obligation of following the way of the Sahaba. We learned earlier in Surah Al-Baqarah that فَإِنْ آمَنُوا بِمِثْلِ مَا آمَنْتُمْ بِي That if they believe like how you have believed, who does you all refer to? The Prophet and the Sahaba. So it's not just important to follow the Sunnah, it's also important to see how the Sahaba interpreted the deen. How they practiced the deen. We also learned from this ayah about the obligation of adhering to the Jama'ah. The obligation of adhering to the jama'ah, the group, the congregation of the Muslims and not splitting away from them. And not splitting away from them. We also learn from this ayah about the evidence of ijma'ah. What does ijma'ah mean? What is ijma'ah? Have you heard of the term ijma'ah? Consensus amongst the scholars of the ummah. Consensus. You see, there are some issues in which the Qur'an clearly states what we need to do, what we cannot do. If you don't find it from the Qur'an, you definitely find it from the Sunnah. Sometimes you don't find from the Sunnah, you find from the statements of the Sahaba. And sometimes there is a new issue, which you don't find the evidence of anywhere. So the scholars, they are the ones who gave their opinions. Some opinions, all of the scholars did not agree upon. But other matters the scholars did agree upon. Other matters, the scholars did agree upon. So if there is a matter on which there is an ijma, meaning all of the scholars have agreed upon it, then in that case, it is an obligation upon us to follow that. Because over here, وَيَتَّبِعْ غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ We learned that Imam Shafi'i, when he wanted to find an evidence for the obligation of adhering to the ijma, to the unanimous consensus, he read the Qur'an like 300 times. 300 times. Have you done that? Have you done that? He did that just to find an evidence. And when he read this ayah, when he came across this ayah, probably the 300th time, what does it show to us? That every time you learn, every time you read, you learn something different. So then this is the ayah that he presented as the evidence for the importance of adhering to the jama'ah. And the Prophet ﷺ said that Allah will never unite my ummah on misguidance. Allah will never unite my ummah on misguidance. And the hand of Allah is above the jama'ah. We also learn as a summary of this ayat that when a person leaves the sunnah, because it starts from وَمَنْ يُشَاقِقِ rasula, It starts from leaving the sunnah, ignoring the command of the Prophet ﷺ. As a result of that, he will not follow the way of the believers. The result of leaving the sunnah is what? What's the result? That you're not going to be on the way that the believers are on. You're going to have invented your own way. So if a person invents his own way, his own thing in their religion, that is an innovation. And that is completely rejected. If you look at it, the Qur'an could have been revealed by itself. I mean, the book could have been sent by itself. 
But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who had sahaba. Why? To show to us that this is the rule, this is the command, this is how you follow. So if a person leaves the Qur'an, leaves the sunnah, as a result, what is he going to do? He's going to leave the way of the believers and as a result, he will have invented his own way. We also learn from this ayat that a person who innovates something in their religion, then he becomes نُوَلِّهِ مَا تَوَلَّى What does he become? A leader. What does it mean by that? That everyone who follows what he has invented, he will also get a sin for that. Let's listen to the recitation. لا خير فيك